Okay. All right. Thanks for having us, everyone. Hello, and thank you for having us today. We're excited to be here. Let's get started. Go ahead, Michael. So, hello, my name is Michael. Three things you need to know about me is I work at Sobeys, I'm a public speaker, and I play basketball and baseball for Special Olympics. Hello, I'm Kayla. Three things you should know about me is I'm a creative director at Rally Rally, a design studio focused on social change. I just had a newborn. Um, Nola is her name. She's in the audience. And I have a Pomeranian. So Michael and I are here today to talk to you about writing and designing his self-published book titled Can't Read, Can't Write, Here's My Book. So this is us when we were younger. Um, I always knew that Michael was different. I knew that things that I found easy, Michael uh, struggled with. I knew that his mannerisms were different from mine. Um, he didn't have as many friends. Uh, and we are here today. But my parents told me and told us to love each other and get to know each other. And so, Michael, is there something else you want to say? Yes, I want to say that I have a visible disability. I have autism intellectual disability. So what that means is my brain's wired differently, but that's OK. I know I still belong in this world. I memorized my name is Michael. Now I know that my name is, I can see my sword of my name is Michael in there, but there's, I don't know where the rest of the word is. Now I know it's Michelangelo, not the famous painter, it's a Ninja Turtle, uh, <laughs> and, it's, uh, and, and also too is a, a pizza, but also too is that now I know it's Michelangelo uh, because it's together, because when I was first starting to read um, uh, cue cards, they usually would have um, pictures by itself and then they would have the words, but I only know it when it came together because I could see the words. I mean, I could see the picture. So a lot of Michael's reading is done through memorization, similar to today's presentation. So we're here, like I said, and we're going to jump into talking about how Michael wrote his book and how I helped to support him through the design. So uh, one Christmas, my sister came down. Uh, she's an older sister, obviously, and uh, she uh, <laughs> She has, um, so basically I use my iPad and uh, she asked me to use my, net, she wanted to use my iPad to watch Netflix. I said, sure, go right ahead. But being an older sister, she threw through my iPad and she uh, set upon my notes and she had everything set by herself first. And then she went up and she said, Michael, what do you want to do with this? And I said, well, I'd like to try to write a book. That's how it all began. So good thing I was snooping. So, so it's an all biography about my life. So I started when I was 21. I finished when I'm 27 because I'm 28 now. So I use my iPad speech to text technology. And as you guys know, technology is not perfect. So for example, when I have a speech impediment kind of, so some words come out Zachly, but when so sometimes they come out Zach Lee, like a person's name. So I like, I didn't say that. So we worked with Megan, an editor, and she really helped to craft Michael's story. There was a lot of back and forth between them. The goal was to keep it as authentic as possible to what Michael had written. Um, and just to talk a bit about the process, so when Megan would send her feedback, Michael, because he can't read, it's difficult to skim through. So typically, we would skim, and we would fill in where she um, made suggestions. So Michael and I would do this together, where I would read her suggestions and edits, and Michael would speak out loud. and pace as he does, and then I would write that on the, the computer. So along with Michael sharing his story, he brings up many topics that he cares deeply about. I talk about growing up with a disability, authentic inclusion, uh, and working, and Special Olympics, and so much more. So we knew this book needed to be highly visual. I wanted this to be a great tool for Michael to have these conversations. So I asked my sister that I have to have, we have a planning meeting that had to make it three different things. It had to be, uh, my favorite color is orange and green. It had to be big enough for my hands because I would say it looked kind of silly if I had a small book with big hands. <laughs> so, I had to have, so I had to have a certain size. And I also had to have family pictures and obviously some drawings. So, and I knew with design that there was so much more that we could do to amplify Michael's voice. 
So we decided to do chapters, and we asked illustrators and designers to illustrate those chapters so that Michael would know when navigating through the book what that chapter is about. This one here is really good. I really like this one. I talk about Sobeys. And what happened was I, do, I worked there for nine years. But you can see there's also, is there, there's also a uniform you have to have. But you can't see my face cut. I usually jug everything through the day. You can see, but you can see this. So they're like, oh, let's put uh, art. Like, so basically, they want to put my, um, the artist wanted to put my expressions and else that on my shoes. But I said it, that's OK, but I wanted to make sure it was black shoes because you need to have a uniform. And have, having autism doesn't really help the situation because I know it's supposed to be black shoes. It bothers me. It should be black shoes, not white shoes. But I told them to let it go, and this is the creative freedom that we have to give our designers. <laughs> so we kept it the way it is. And so some of the designers and illustrators are in the audience, so thank you very much for Thank you very much. Um, similar to when Michael talked about using uh, images with words, we used images to help navigate through the, the narrative and so, to represent stories like this one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so um, basically, I talk about Sobeys. So I, everybody asked me what I do in the day. I said, I do everything except for knives and money. Knives are my clumsy and I cut my finger worse, so I don't do anything with knives. And money, I have no cup of money. So basically, if I was cashier, they'd still be bankrupt, but my boss, Ron, would not be so happy. So that's why I don't do that. And you'll see this is what it looks like through the pages. So the uh, images are scattered through the text, again, to help Michael remember the stories. So as you can see there, there's a great website. You should check it out. I also have my book on Apple Bookstore, so people can't read like myself. They could use the technology, or in the case might be, to read the book, because I want to make it accessible for everybody. And then Michael has social media. This is great for connecting with people as well as documenting all his experiences. Go follow him. Um, I just like to point out that we all use social media very easily. If you can't read, it is difficult to navigate some of these platforms and use it. So something that we do very quickly, it might take time for Michael. So we do help support him with these platforms. This is just a quote that we like to share. We get lots of feedback from families, siblings, people with disabilities, people who know people with disabilities. And this is what really fuels Michael and I to have these conversations, is because him sharing his brave story is really making an impact in the world. So I give some proceeds to Special Olympics as well. Yeah, and they're the charity this year, as mentioned. So please go check out the booth. So this is one of the different things I talk about. Uh, talk about a friendship. And also, too, is healthy, healthy life. And also, too, is that um, having a thing. So yeah, and being a leader. Being a leader. So Special Olympic has been a part of our family for a long time. And just something to bring up is whenever I go to Michael's tournaments, the athletes, the heart that they have, the support, the, the, the fact that they can be comfortable playing with who they are um, has been a very great thing. So I encourage people to get to know the organization and as well get to know people with disabilities. It's very rewarding. I have sold over 7,000 copies of my book. I like to share my story to help others. And I do different kind of, these are some pictures I do presentations for. So he presents at high schools, uh, universities, uh, elementary schools. He presents at organizations, at events and conferences. Michael has many different messages that he's sending to never give up, to always uh, believe in yourself, to focus on your strengths, um, to show that anything is possible. And Michael is the most authentic person that I know. And through his book, even though it was a personal project, he's now part of a large, important conversation about diversity and inclusion. And what we've learned being part of this conversation is that diversity is a reality. We're all different, and we need to embrace and celebrate that. And inclusion is a choice. We need to do better, and we're responsible. We have a responsibility to make sure that we're including people who are different. And we like to always finish by saying, our world is diverse, and what makes us individuals is ultimately what can and should connect us. Be yourself and be kind to one another. So I'm here all day um, signing a book where the Special Olympics booth is. 
and you guys can come and say hi to me, and uh, I get the signatures, and it's $20 for my book, and please come and stop by and say hi. Thank you and very much. donate to Special Olympics. Donate Thanks, to Special guys. Olympics. Thank you.